All right, everybody, it's time for another Vice Review. Stick around. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Matt. Thanks for stopping by. So the Vice I'm going to review today is Danica's Dan Vice. Comes in this box right here. This is the actual Vice that came in it. Now, before we get started, let me tell you the four things I look at when I'm reviewing a vise. And the first thing is, how well does it hold a hook? We'll get in there, we'll put some different hooks in this and show you how this one works. Second thing is, how easy is it to set up and use? We'll walk through those steps. Third thing, what's it made out of? The materials, which speak to how long I think the vise is gonna last. And then the fourth criteria is, how much does it cost? Is it gonna be a good value for your money? So this one, Danica's Dan Vice. Uh, we'll, I'll show you about the hook holding power in just a second, but first let's let's put the magnet test to it and see what is this thing made out of, talk about the materials. Well, first off, it's about 13 ounces, so it's not real heavy. There's not a whole lot of steel on this. The jaws are steel, there's a magnet there. The post is aluminum, the bobbin cradle is aluminum. Some of these screws inside of it are steel, uh, but for the most part, it's just a plastic and um, aluminum with the steel jaws. So how long do I think this vise is gonna last? Well, I think it'll last a really long time. And the plastic parts, it's not a cheap plastic. I can't remember what it's called, but it's, it's gonna last you a long time. So how easy is it to get set up and use? Well, it's got a big C-clamp on it. It's a kind of a unique C-clamp in that You've got this one bolt right here, or, or just screw on this, and then you can open the, the uh, jaws to the C-clamp. They're not the easiest things to open, but they do open you know, fairly easily. There are a couple of pips right here so that when you put it on the bench, it doesn't go too far. So let's put it on the bench and tighten it up and then test it out. So after you get it affixed to your bench, you have this one bolt right here which you can loosen up and then you know slide this in and out it's got this piece right here that you know up or down helps you adjust the height you put it back in there then when you put this bolt in it locks it you know it squeezes that that little cone piece tight so just like a plumbing fitting and now it's in there good it's not going to move at all so i've got it the right height i want and then uh, at the right angle. So what's next in getting it set up? Well, you probably want to adjust your tension. So see this right here? This is how I would tie with it. It's spinning around, not too loose, but not too hard to tie. So how you adjust that is, well, you really have to hold this piece and then you grab these two pieces right here, these two bolts, and then you tighten or loosen. So that loosened it, now it's pretty easy to spin could loosen it a little bit more and it's basically free spinning right there. Obviously you're probably not going to tie like that. So what you'll do, you'll hold this and then just spin it around until you find the, the right amount of tension, which you can still spin it, but it's not too hard to spin, but it, maybe it will stay in the position you leave it in. So that's how you get this part adjusted. Now, how easy is it to set up to tie in a rotary? Well, it's kind of the same jaw mechanism as a Montana Mongoose or the Griffin Odyssey. You've got a cam right here that you open and close, but you've also got this screw right here to fine tune, I guess, the, the jaws. So let's put a standard, I guess we got a size six streamer hook right here. Let's put this thing in here. And what you'll wanna do, just put it in there and tighten this with your, your fingers until it's you know almost grabbing it, not really tight and then you'll just close this cam right here and now it's locked in. So that is, you know, it's in there good. That, I don't have it parallel to the axis of rotation just yet. So if I wanted to use this as a rotary, I would make sure I got that in there like that. And that's pretty close right there. But also different size hooks are going to require different height. And how you do that, you have one bolt right here, you loosen that and you can slide this thing up or down. So a, a bigger hook, obviously you'd slide down, and then a smaller hook that you wanted to use the rotary for, you might slide it up. So let's say we go right there. And so it's pretty easy to set up in the rotary function right there. Now, 
one other point here, you've got the bobbin cradle. You'd spin this around, flip it up right here. This is probably, you'd hang your thread off that if you were tying in the, the rotary function. So I think, yeah, that really covers it. The, we talked about it does hold a hook well, and I, I put in a size 20 up to a one alt and it held them both fine. It's made out of decent materials. I think it's gonna last a pretty long time. It's not terribly hard to get set up. I forgot to mention, it does come with one other piece right here. You can swap this piece out. If, you, if you're a left-handed tire and you were tying it with the other side, you just use this piece right here. But also what you can do with this piece is if you wanted to flip it up right here, you could put this piece on like this and then have your jaws pointing up. Um, you'd lose the rotary function by doing that, but you would, would get uh, an vice that's easier to use. Um, because as it is right now, if I was tying with this, with this vise, this is the probably the tension I would use, and this is probably the setting. I could tie on this like this, and I tied one fly just to practice, and it was fine. It held the hook just fine. It wasn't all that hard to tie on, but one thing that was difficult was flipping it over and trying to tie on the underside because now you see you've got this whole the whole jaw mechanism kind of right here in your way so it's a little bit harder to tie on the underside of the hook when you're in this configuration right here so overall it does well with hook holding power it's made out of decent materials it's not too difficult to get set up and the price point as of September 2021, it's about $110, whether you get it from a fly shop or Amazon, it's, it's always right about that price. Now, here's the hard part of this review. I typically don't like to review things if I'm not going to recommend them, but my honest review is I don't like it a whole lot. And I feel a little bit bad reviewing a product that I'm not gonna recommend, but quite honestly, I'm not going to recommend this. If someone comes up to me and says, hey, what's a good vice for $100? This is not really what I'm going to tell them. I mean, I think there are better options out there that are cheaper. And if you don't mind spending a little bit more, there are options out there that are certainly a lot better. Now, I don't want anybody to think I'm trashing this vice because it's a decent, solid vice. But to me, it's not the easiest thing to tie on. It was a little bit cumbersome getting adjusted. The bobbin cradle is a little bit in the way, and if you wanted to change it out to make it where it was a little bit easier to tie, well, swapping this thing out with this, that's not an easy thing to do. It's a, a five minute task. And simply going from a rotary function to a stationary function, that, that's stationary right now, that's not a one-handed operation. That's to set your tools down, put a good grab on it right here and then loosen this till you find the right amount of tension and off you go. So yeah, in a nutshell, it's a decent vice, but you know, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be recommending it. But I did decide that, you know, I will give it away because I bought this vice with the intent to do a giveaway. And if I don't, it's just gonna sit in the box on my shelf and not be any use to anybody. Now this, this could be an, an upgrade for a lot of you folks out there that are tying on um, maybe a double A or a Supreme or something that came with a kit. And there's nothing wrong with that. Lots of us started with fly tying vices that came from a kit. So if that's the boat you're in, yeah, this is a, a decent vice and it'll be a nice upgrade for you. Or if you're tying on a, a mid-grade vice and you just want something super lightweight that's easy to travel with, yeah, it's not a bad vice for that. So, okay. For those of you who are new here and you've never participated in one of our giveaways, it's really simple. Just leave a comment, put the hashtag, we'll say Danvice, pound sign, D-A-N-V-I-S-E. Leave that anywhere in your uh, comment. This video is gonna be published uh, Sunday, September 26th. And next Sunday, which will be October 3rd, I'll go to the random comment picker. I will have it pick a winner and then I'll get this vice in the mail to you. So sorry I'm not reviewing a vice that I'm more excited about. Uh, like we did last week with the, the Regal medallion. I really liked that thing, but it is what it is. I'm giving you my honest opinion of this thing. And while it's a, a okay, decent vice, it's still 
not really one I'm going to be recommended, but it might be something that, that somebody out there will get some good use out of. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care. See you next time.